Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how I built this procedural telephone pole HDA within SideFX Houdini. Now it's not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial per se, but it is going to be kind of a good overview of how you could approach a challenge like this. So hopefully you can glean some insight, and like anything with Houdini, uh, there's more than one way to do something, but uh, hopefully this gives you some good ideas. So for this I wanted it to be fairly dynamic and allow things like the density of the poles, uh, controlling things like the wire sag and the seed values, the wire thickness, uh, things like the crossbar placement and the offset of them. And then uh, another thing that's cool here is you can also do something like the pole height offset so that it, you can adjust the height of these poles along the length of the curve using something like a ramp. Um, so I had these two inputs for the curves and also for the ground plane. So in this case, I had a mountain stop feed into the second input here. And what's nice about it is it allows us to procedurally have the poles still stick into the ground and react once you change the input uh, grid geometry here. So let's dive into this HDA, and it looks more complicated than it is. Um, it's a lot of the same steps repeated over and over. So we have this uh, curve in input one and the grid in input two. And let's jump back in here so you can see how it works. So for the curve, uh, first things first was resampling. Uh, because I used a copy to points to copy our poles, um, the density of those points directly corresponds to the density of the amount of poles. So in the mountain grid, I used a race off in order to project that curve onto the ground. It's fairly simple there. On the telephone pole, first starting with a line, there's a few things that I want to do to set up. I created all these different groups here, and in these groups, they correspond to the top, uh, each of the middle sections, and the bottom. And what that allows us to do is isolate those pieces of the geometry later on. So I then copied these poles or these lines to each point along that original curve we inputted. And then I moved on to having them feed into a sweep node um, using a circle as an input object. Now what's nice about sweep is you can control the shape of the geometry using this scale curve. And that just allows us to have a bit more finesse over the overall design of it. Having a normal color, moving on, um, and then have it merge together with these crossbar sections. These are merged together like so. And I'll take you uh, through a breakdown of, of how these were built. Um, and then each of these uh, pieces have a point on the ends of them, which are then fed into this wire generating node. Uh, it's its own HDA that's embedded, but I'll show you how it works here with a simple view. So imagine you have these poles that are generated and using that group, uh, groups that we set up uh, above, if we isolate with the blast node just the top points and we connect them with an add node, we can then feed them into this HDA. Now what it's going to do is it's going to, um, let's just dive into that HDA here, it's going to take each piece of this curve, it's going to convert it into a line so that each of these sections have a rest length attribute, and then I'm going to feed it into a for each uh, node here so that as it goes through each one of these broken up lines, we can resample it, add more points. Then we can blast out just the middle geometry, and then I'm going to feed it into an attribute wrangle. This attribute wrangle is going to just use a tiny bit of X, and it's going to push down those points in the middle in the Y direction. And what we can do is using the iteration count, a seed value, and a random value that creates a value between 1 and 3, we can just do a bit of simple math to have each of those points in the middle push down in the Y direction uh, using the rest length, the control uh, of the channel amount, and a random value here. So you can see if I X out of this single pass and I see what that does, um, you can see that as I play around with the seed values and the amount, we control the intensity and the randomness of each of that uh, hanging wire. So finally feeding that into resample with subdivision curves, we get these kind of nice smooth curves that look like hanging wires. Then we can jump out of the HDA, feed it into a polywire to add some thickness to it, and just simply duplicate it over uh, when we're creating our secondary wires. So let's jump now back into how we created those crossbar sections. So let's highlight the poles. And I'm gonna show you this giant purple section here in a moment, because uh, that's where we're generating this geometry here. So all of that geometry is created in this section here. And it starts with this line here. Now this line, each one of these points generally has its own group. 
And what that's going to allow me to do is again use the blast soft in order to isolate these points. And I'm going to be uh, duplicating this geometry throughout its creation so that I can keep isolating portions of this original spline. So the first things first is I fed it into a sweep node to create our original bar. Then I use a transform node in order to thin it out here. And then I have it all feeding into this general merge node. So it's all kind of being using the same initial creation geometry. Um, so for instance, I resampled to thin out those points, created a box to duplicate uh, these boxes across these middle points here. And just using a simple uh, transform node, we can have it duplicated and mirrored on the other side. Those again feed into this merge node, so we get that middle geometry there. Um, what else here? So that's the initial thin out box. We also have this uh, metal file here that I built in 3ds Max. And I have the points on the very ends uh, stick out. And using an add node, we can create these two curves here. And what's nice about it is within Houdini 19, I believe, or maybe it's 18, that this is a new feature, we have this chain function. So we can actually have this geometry project along the length of those curves, which is a really nice way to, to keep things nice and dynamic. Um, so that's those pieces there. I then had some bolt pieces, which were just basically cylinders, uh, again, projected on those other points uh, with the resampled curve. I used a transform to duplicate it over to the other side. Uh, using another simple merge node in order to merge all that geometry back together for the bolts, the inside bars, and these exterior geometry here. Uh, and then these crossbars on the bottom. So that was also an FBX file modeled in 3ds Max. I used a match size box in order to conform that down to smaller uh, boxes, which I needed to uh, fit within a certain area. Uh, using transforms, scale them down. Nothing complicated. Uh, it was just to kind of position them nicely into place. And that was pretty much the finished piece here. So I have these other for each loops, and this was more for creating the randomized offset of these crossbars. So for instance, just isolating each of these points, this was for doing the wire geometry. So before feeding in these outside points into the wire geometry, I needed to do a for each loop in order to offset the overall position in Y of these wire sag points. So um, you can see uh, that these are all from the original geometry. On this other side, I did the same thing, except I was copying the whole crossbar geometry. And again, if I isolate the single pass, you can see that for each primitive or each pieces of this geometry, it was going through and creating just a bit of vex in order to have a bit of randomness in the overall position. It was just having some offset in, in this position of these primitives. Um, so this is totally optional. Um, I just wanted to have a bit more control, just add a bit more natural offset to um, these telephone poles. So for these points, I initially broke them off on the right here. Did the same thing as I showed you on that simple view. I did an add node to connect all those points together. And then I used a group expression in order to isolate these tiny pieces. Um, using a convert line, I just looked at rest length. So if I jump into this expression here, I just said, okay, if the rest length was smaller than a certain value, Put them into a group called two small spline and then using a blast sop we could completely remove those from the chain and then i put them in the same hda as i showed you before so that each one of these curves had a hanging wire then on the other side this was duplicated and all i did was just change that input group for the points so that i would have perfectly aligned hanging wires that uh, accurately aligned with the telephone pole geometry or the end points here as you can see so that was pretty much uh, the majority of it. Um, I had a switch node here for being able to switch to the simplified view, but uh, a lot of this was just put through the HDA so I could expose these parameters on the high level uh, node here so that I can control things as I was working on it. I can go a lot more in depth with something like a model like this, but I just wanted to kind of give you a brief overview of how you can tackle something like this. Anyway, I hope it helped you out and I'll see you next time.